Hello everyone, I'm back with a new tutorial. This one is about using geometry nodes in Blender 2.93 and creating a flower scene like the one you see here on the screen. I have tried to keep this simple and easy to follow, so let's start. We are not going to delete the cube as we are going to use it in a moment. Press Shift A and add a plane and move it to the side. This is going to be our flower petal. I am renaming it so we can find it easily later on. Change the scale of the plane and slightly increase the size in length. Next, go in edit mode and add three loop cuts by pressing Ctrl R and one loop, loop cut in the middle. Switch to vertex mode and scale down the end vertices. Increase the size of the other side. Move the vertex in the center forward. Select the vertices and make a rough shape for the petal. I am going to select the vertices at the front and also move them up. We can always come back and refine the shape later as needed. Now we are going to move the pivot point of the petal object so we can rotate it correctly from the end point when using in geometry nodes. For this, first go in edit mode and select all faces by pressing A and simply move the entire object till the pivot point dot is at the end. Exit edit mode and you will be able to see the pivot changed. Right click on the object and select smooth shade. We are going to add two modifiers now. First one is the solidify modifier. This will be used for adding some thickness. After that, we will add a subdivision modifier. Change the levels to 2 to make the shape look smoother. Press Ctrl A and apply rotation and scale. Now select the cube and switch to geometry nodes window from the top tab menu. We are not going to use the spreadsheet window at this time, so we are going to close it. With the cube selected, click the create button. This will add our first geometry node setup. Now press shift A and go in mesh primitives and from there select circle. Add this node and connect the geometry property to the group output. Our cube will be replaced with a circle. We can change the radius and the amount of vertices also. I am going to change the vertices to 12. Next, press Shift A and this time go in Point menu and select Point Instance. In the Object property, click the Pick tool and select the petal object that we have created. A group of petals will be created over the circle. The total number of petals is based on the vertex number in the circle node. Now let's add a new node which is the align rotation to vector. This node will allow us to control the rotation of the petals. I am going to change the vector property to attribute and click in the vector input box and select position. The petals will be arranged in a circular way. But if you do not see the same result, try changing the x, y, z axis on top of the node. You can change the radius and the amounts of petals to show. Use any value which you like. I am going to use 8 vertices. To control the rotation of the petals, we are going to add a point rotate node. Here change the object to point. Make sure the node sequence is same and it is added between the align vector and point instance node. Change the XYZ values to see the result and how the petals are rotated.
I am only going to change the Y value for now. Just like the rotate node, to change the scale of the petals, I will now add a point scale node. We can use XYZ values to further make the petals long, short or any shape that will be possible. Now we are going to add some more detail to our flower and join them with the geometry nodes. Press Shift A and add a cube. Control 2 to add a 2 level subdivision. Make the object smaller so that it fits in the middle and move it to the side. Control A to apply the rotation and scale. Select the flower and in the node editor press shift A and search for object info node and add it. Next go in geometry menu and select join node and add it after the point instance node. From the object info node connect geometry property to join node and using the pick tool select the round object that we have just created. You will see it has been positioned in the center of the petals. Like this you can add any object and join them. Now we are going to start making some materials. Select the shaded editor. Switch to material preview and increase the viewport HDR strength so we can see the results better. Assign a yellow color material to the round object. Select the petal object and create another new material. Change the color any you like or you can leave it as it is. Now add a color ramp node. Connect the color to base color. With the color ramp selected, press Ctrl T. This will add 3 nodes. Since we are not using any image texture, you can remove the texture node and connect the vector from the mapping node to factor of color ramp. Change the texture coordinate property from UV to object. Then in the color, change the color of the first point from black to pink or any other. Slightly move the point towards the right. You may need to rotate the color by a value of 45 degrees in the mapping node to make it look correct so that it starts from the center. You can also change the color ramp settings from linear to B spline to have a smoother color blending. Now we will switch back to geometry node editor. We are going to add a stem under the flower. Move the flower object up. And this time we will add a bezier curve. Rotate it 90 degrees. Make it straight and bigger. In the curve properties, add some depth for thickness. Edit the top curve point so it looks connected with the top yellow part. We are going to connect the stem with the rest of the flower. Move it to the side, create a new green color material for it.
The process of connecting the stem will be same just like the way we connected the yellow round part. In the geometry nodes, duplicate the object info node and connect the geometry property with the join node. Using the picker tool, this time select the stem object. The object will show but it may look rotated or small. To fix this, just select the original stem object and Ctrl A and select Apply Rotation and Scale. To move the position of any object, we can use the Transform node in the Geometry menu. And here we move the Z position value to bring it back in place. Now all parts are connected. Another small change I would like to add is the ability to rotate the yellow part and making the petals rotate along with it. But you can also skip this part if you want. Duplicate the transform node and place it after the joint geometry node. Change the Z value to 0. Next, duplicate the joint geometry node again and place it after the transform node. If we rotate now, the entire flower will rotate. In order to keep the top part separate, we will first disconnect the connection from the stem to the first join node. Press Ctrl and drag over the line with right click to remove the connection. From here, join the geometry property to the last join node. Now if we change the rotation values in the transform node, the stem will no longer will be affected. In this way, you can create and control different objects positions and rotations. Finally. We are going to add some grass at the flower base. For this, add a plane and make it bigger. Press Ctrl 3 to add a 3 level subdivision, making it round and apply this modifier as well. We are going to reuse the petal object for grass. But you can create a new model as well with a different shape if you want. So Shift D to duplicate the petal, rotate it 90 degrees and make it thinner. Next assign the same green material which we created from the stem part. Select the ground plane and create a new geometry node setup. First, add a point instance node In the object property, select the grass model The scale and shape of the grass may not look correct So to fix this, select the plane and Ctrl A, apply rotation and scale Do the same for the grass model as well Now add a align rotation to vector node. Change the vector property to attribute and in the vector input select position. Change the axis to Z. The grass instances will point outside. Reduce the vector amount a little so that they don't look completely flat. Add a join node and connect the geometry so we can see the base plane as well and assign the same grass material. To add some randomized scale to the grass, 
we will add a node called attribute randomize. Drop this node between the align and instance node. In the attribute type scale, you will be able to see different sizes of grass. Change the minimum and maximum values to get different results of big and small grass instances. One small adjustment I would like to add to the green material is to have some variation in color. So we will switch to shader editor and then we will add two new nodes. Color ramp and an object info node. Connect the color from the color ramp to base color and random property of the object info to factor. What this does is assign a different color to each grasp instance based on the colors defined in the color ramp. I'm going to change the colors to shades of green to the different color points so we can have some variation in the grass. Keep making some adjustments that you feel as needed. I will also turn on ambient occlusion in the render properties so we can see some shadow depth. And this completes the tutorial. Geometry nodes is a very big subject and it is difficult to cover all things in one video. With new Blender 3.0 coming soon, many things are changing in geometry nodes so I hope to make new updated videos as well. If you want to see more tutorials in the future, be sure to give this video a like, leave a comment and subscribe. As always, thank you very much for viewing and I will see you in the next one.